Hello, good morning. Today's my topic is positive feedback, and these this is from the lesson anatomy. Uh, positive feedback loop uh, is a type of loop where there is an end point in any physiological process, while in negative feedback loop there is uh, no end point. That means the negative feedback loop always occurs in the body in a cyclic manner when body needed a stop an end point at that moment positive feedback occurs so let's discuss more about it here i have uh, written in my positive feedback loop intensifies changes okay yeah intensifies changes in the body's physiological condition rather than reversing it there is no reverse of positive feedback system yeah? and it also intensify the process when body need to stop the process yeah? and it also occur in a process or stepwise cascade manner positive feedback is normal okay positive feedback is normal only when there is a definite end point the mm, major example of positive feedback loop one is childbirth yeah and another is body response to blood loss are two example of positive feedback loop that are normal but but are activated only when needed the first one here these are the measured uh, example i have given uh, in this lesson one is childbirth second one is uh, blood clotting blood clotting factor or process these are the two processes of positive feedback loop so let's discuss more about it here i have given an um, an image i uploaded it from google image you can also refer to google for this image and the another images are also available here the if we i consider here the first step of childbirth nerve impulses from cervix transmitted to brain okay cervix is the lower part of the uterus yeah when childbirth the first the baby's head will push out from the womb how it happens this is the cervix and the nerve impulse present in the cervix sends the message to the brain then what happens when brain receives the stimuli yeah in the second process brain stimulates pituitary gland we know that pituitary gland is present in the head and or brain and pituitary gland to secrete oxytocin when pituitary gland will be stimulated it secretes oxytocin oxytocin is a birth hormone okay helps in uh, birth hormone it helps in childbirth along with uh, the um, smooth labor okay and the third what happens after uh, secretion of uh, oxytocin oxytocin carried in blood stream to the uterus we know that all hormones are secreted from endocrine gland and these are dockless gland so their secretion mixes with blood and the blood uh, carries to the target organ here target organ is uterus so this is the third step and in the fourth step what happens yeah oxytocin stimulates uterine contraction and pushes the baby towards cervix uh, the oxytocin stimulates here yeah, this is the uterine wall and it pushes the what pushes the oxytocin oxytocin helps in pushing that means contraction of uterine wall so that it is also a peristalsis movement the wave like contraction and relaxation motion of the uterus so that the baby will be pushed towards the cervix and so that the birth of the baby will occur and in the fifth stage yeah 
head of baby pushes against the cervix the first the head of the baby will be pushes to the cervix and thus child will birth child will birth okay and the uh, birth of child is the end point of this positive feedback loop after child birth the uh, body's condition of a mother will be come to normal state okay if any um, cause or any abnormalities child cannot birth it will be fatal for the mother and uh, it sometimes it also cause death of the mother because positive feedback loop must have an end point it it never have any reverse okay so let's move to the next slide yeah i have written another example a second example is uh, blood clotting okay second type of positive feedback center on reversing extreme damage to the body following a penetration wound, penetrating wound the most immediate threat is excessive blood loss when we get any injury there is loss of blood from the blood vessels For, uh, loss of blood circulating means reduced blood pressure to brain and vital organs if perfusion is severely reduced the vital organ will shut down and person will die what happens when excessive blood loss occurs it automatically lead to the low of blood pressure and there is an interruption of blood circulation to brain and vital organs like uh, heart kidney other blood vessels and other visceral organs also and this interruption will shut down the normal physiological process and blood blood flow in the body and ultimately lead to die so this perfusion or the oozing out of uh, blood from the wound must be sealed and this sealing process occurs by clotting okay blood clotting and how blood clotting occurs the platelets present in the blood is helpful to seal the wound after sealing the wound the normal procedure again happens and the uh, uh, the blood flow will be to its normal range okay over here the body responds to this potential catastrophe by releasing substances in the injured blood vessel wall that begins the process of blood clotting i told you the process of stopping the excess blood from the blood vessel is called as blood clotting and as each step of clotting occurs that stimulates the release of more clotting substances okay this accelerates the process of clotting and sealing up damaged area okay yeah and here last point of the blood clotting process i have written clotting is contained in a local area local area means any um, area of hand knee or uh, leg based on tightly controlled availability of clotting proteins okay if clotting proteins are less then it fails to clot and sealing of the wound this is an adaptive life saving cascade event cascade events means the one on one event Uh, or one event after another it's a sequence or cascade like stack okay yeah cascade oh okay this is all about uh, i have already uploaded an image for it here the first event break or tear in blood vessel wall yeah there is a break or tear so that blood will ooze from the blood vessels feedback cycle immediately oozing the blood from the blood vessel feedback cycle initiated in the second step clotting occurs and platelets adhere to the side and release the chemicals okay here yeah. 
and release the chemicals attract more platelets and this more platelets form a net like structure at the site of wound and after some seconds it will seal the wound okay in the fourth step clotting proceeds newly formed clot grow grows and in this manner the wound are sealed and feedback cycle ends after clotting the seal after this uh, wound will be sealed the feedback cycle will be stopped no further feedback uh, process going on so it is called as positive feedback loop okay uh, let's discuss some more of this yeah uh, i'm going to summarize the this three process uh, here i have discussed positive feedback okay here yeah. the first example is childbirth okay childbirth here what happens in the child the first step is the step 1 the nerves present in the cervix send messages to the brain okay then in the second step step 2 the brain stimulates the pituitary gland we know that pituitary present uh, below the hypothalamus which is present in the brain okay the brain stimulates the pituitary gland and release oxytocin okay. oxytocin is otherwise called as birth hormone helps in smooth labor and contraction of the uterus so that baby will be born okay step 3 step 3 what happens the oxytocin when reaches to the cervix causes stronger contraction okay stronger contraction of smooth muscles in the uterus pushing the baby the baby further down the birth canal okay further down the birth canal this causes even greater stretching of cervix okay the cycle of stretching oxytocin released and increasing more forceful contraction stops only when baby is born at this point stretching of cervix halts and stopping release of and the fourth step is here one moment uh, i am going to okay let me insert another
okay i'm creating new whiteboard and in the last one okay that was step three and this yeah step four what happened in the step four the cycle of stretching cycle of stretching yeah. oxytocin release and intensifies sorry release and increasing more forceful contractions okay yeah it stops only when only when the baby is born okay at this point stretching of cervix a uh, cervix halts okay stopping the release of oxytocin release of oxytocin stopping the release of oxytocin there is no need of uh, oxytocin again and the release of oxytocin stops and this is the end of this childbirth mechanism okay I'm using another draw slide. Uh, brain. First step, if we will, whatever the uh, image I have given you, I'm just writing here that brain stimulates stimulates pituitary. pituitary gland to secret oxytocin okay and And next step what happens oxytocin carried to blood stream uterus okay second step this happens after releasing from pituitary gland it is carried to the uterus through bloodstream okay now next step will be there this is the step one mm -hmm. step two and step three is 
oxytocin stimulates uterine wall okay wall and contracts it it also pushes baby towards cervix okay cervix this this is the third step one moment i am writing it again here yeah. yeah. oxytocin stimulates uterine wall contracts contracts it and pushes the baby baby towards cervix okay cervix this is the third step and uh, next and the fourth step what happens head of the baby pushes here baby pushes again cervix this is the fourth step yeah, this one is third step this one is fourth step and the last one the end point yeah nor impulse from cervix transmitted to brain okay. yeah i'm sorry to tell you this is the past step okay otherwise the uh, let me change it okay this is fast okay this is second this is third this one is fourth and this is the last step and this is all about the positive feedback loop of uh, childbirth okay and in this manner it is the end point and after the
breast, no oxytocin will release and no contraction of uterine cavity occur. Okay? And after the childbirth, the body of a female will back to its normal condition. Thank you for watching. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for watching. Bye.